morning everyone. I hope, uh, I hope you're all well. I thought we'd get on for a little bit. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be on for because to be honest with you I'm pretty butchered but um, we're, uh, we're just having a little check with the old instancing chat and think as far as I'm aware I don't think we're no we're not hard instanced at least but we are kind of waiting so yeah we're playing the waiting game <laughs> but uh, I was very fortunate because <clears throat> I spoke with um, uh, a few members of staff on um, Wild West RP who've been kind enough to uh, swap over my um, stagecoach. The one that I'd bought was the four, um, the four horse stagecoach and I'd kind of hadn't really noticed when I was buying it, if you see what I mean, that it was four horses because kind of the angle that it shows it from is a little bit obscured. Um, so yeah, we, um, we bought it and I was a bit like, yeah, I don't mind it actually. And then my experience has been, yeah, four horses is going to be a bit of a nightmare. I haven't even used the thing, so I sort of was asking other people their opinions and stuff um, in character about which one is going to be sort of better in that sense for me to at least learn with. Maybe we'll get a four horse one eventually and trade up to it or something like that. But um, it's um, it's a little bit too. I wouldn't say difficult to handle, but I can imagine like certain certain trips and that kind of thing, like going across across to Blackwater. I know there's like a few bits where you have to go down like steep hairpin turns with rocks and stuff in the way, and I think like the horses at the front would just die, <laughs> and it would end up like in a bit of a mess. So I kind of thought like maybe I should just ask the staff if I can be cheeky and have it swapped over to the other one. Um, and they were good enough to uh, to help me out in that respect. So full props to the staff, and um, yeah, many thanks as well for peeps who um, who helped me out there. All right, we apparently we've been booted. <laughs> I'm hoping that we get back in. I didn't think I was hard instance, but apparently I was. Oh well, looks like we're going to get back in anyway, but um, I'm still keeping an eye on that instancing channel. But yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, obviously props and thanks to the, uh, the staff on Wild West RP for swapping that over for me, so we're going to have a little look at that. Um, one because it should be the same one that we were driving yesterday with um, or from Mr. Choppins um, Sean King's character but um, just have to see how it goes tonight because as I say I'm not um, I'm not sure how much I've got in me if you see what I mean I don't want to be like up until 4 or 5 in the morning again but we'll see but, uh, I was going to try and get on earlier but um, no one else was really around, I don't think so. Kind of made sense to um, just get on for a little bit, see what happens, see where the RP takes us, and then go on from there. It's looking though, still like the server's kind of instanced. I don't think the, I don't think this server's actually merged properly yet, so. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I hope everyone is well. And as I say, uh, we're going to be waiting a short time, I think, for the uh, for the instancing to resolve itself. Maybe we get to pick up another. No, we don't. Okay, that's um, that's good. Let's try again. Depends how long this goes on for. Maybe I don't know what's happening here. 
server two is being restarted again. It looks it looks like right. So we're gonna have to wait again. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Third time lucky? Never know. <laughs> Apparently we've dropped some frames as well. But it's probably all just to do with all the chaos that's going on. Server restarts and all that jazz. Clifford Martin. But yeah, in the next, I think in the next week or so, Doobie, um, the uh, the guy that plays Theodore Johnson, um, and a few of the other people that we play with have been saying that they want to get on a little bit earlier. So I'm hoping that we can all sort of try and find a schedule together where we can bring the time forward a bit. As I was saying earlier to my housemate that, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't really want to be up until like, yeah, five, five, six in the morning sometimes just to, uh, just to get my RP fix, but yeah, to see how it works out. Hey, we have a session. Send this screenshot over. load skin as well on that. We we'll check that we're not yeah, you know, we're not hard instanced. Good good good. have to wait for some more people to merge in. Hopefully everyone starts trickling in. Quite digging um, the outfit. I didn't see before but these shoes are blue but I think it got to a point yesterday where we were going through so many different items and stuff and um, <laughs> Mr. Choppins just kept saying go back go try and know that, that what about that one what about, and this one and that one and that I was just like I'm just taking whatever fucking ones these are. They look kind of dark. They look fine. I'm not fucking swapping anymore. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're. Uh, I think we're good with this with what we've got on. I would like to try and get a waistcoat. Um, the waistcoat that we had on. Which one was it? I think was it this outfit? Let's just pull. Shit, have I saved this one? I'm pretty sure this is red driving. I think it was this one. Uh, oh, here we go. See, why does that... That's loaded perfectly this time. Yeah, I really like that, actually. Um, these are those blue boots. I quite like this. This, I suppose this could be, this might be good actually as an outfit for, um, for like bar or security work. I quite like that. 
So we've got two outfits there that um, I think will work. But yeah, the, I wanted that waistcoat there on our on our other outfit. So let's, let's load this uh, uh, driver outfit. No, uh, red driving. That's the one we want to bring out. The yeah, lobby's looking solid. Don't see Sean or anyone there. <laughs> no names. <laughs> um, no names that we know, but it doesn't matter. As I say, I might only be streaming for a little while, but I um, just wanted to get on and uh, see what's what. Um, not least as well, because we haven't done this yet. Hey, hey, thank you guys. That's perfect. That's exactly what we were after. I'm so glad. Yeah, we lost, um, we lost 30, $30, but $30 is not, not a lot really. And, um, I figured it's, worth taking the hit on uh, on the price that we paid for the other the other wagon to uh, to be able to get this one sorted out it's kind of a shame really because if um if we'd had some more people on tonight it would have been good to be able to um i don't know if you can can you stable coaches i don't know actually i can't even think how you get get rid of it but um, let me just do myself a favor and swap over to that and swap back so that we've got we've got chat up and I can actually see what's going on now so yeah this is the same one that um, Sean has got um, as Chobbins. Don't know how you get rid of the coach though, apart from obviously like it, <laughs> it's getting smashed. <laughs> I'm wondering if that's the only way that you can get rid of them, but um, we're gonna ride into um, or maybe you go, I don't know, maybe you go to the Maybe you go to the wagon place. Who knows? We'll find out. But yeah, I'm gonna ride around with seven dollars on us and hope that we don't get robbed by anyone. Although to be honest, we kind of blend in pretty well, I think, with um, with the locals and so on. So I'm not sure if NPC, um, NPCs, if players are really gonna be bo bothered about robbing a stagecoach that's just tickling along. So yeah, the plan is, unless we get like embroiled in um, embroiled in uh, some deep RP or get um, taken off into uh, Saint Denis or whatever again, um, we'll probably be on until maybe like maybe three o'clock, half three maybe my time, and then that will be like kind of the point where I think I'll call it if, um, if we haven't got much going. I think we've got more people filtering in. I don't know actually, it looks full now maybe, but... If, um, I know that Sean was saying he was trying to get on server 2 but um, I don't know if he's managed it or if he's queued or what the situation is there I was also going to take us down to um, 
Clifford's father's place, um, which is the pig farm um, south of Flatneck Station. Um, but I think we'll save that to do whilst when we've got other people around, if you see what I mean. Because um, I want to have like a conversation, like a heartfelt kind of conversation or something with uh, with his father. I don't know if I'm going to like put on another voice as his dad. <laughs> um, and then be like, yeah, having a conversation with myself. If you see what I mean in saying like, well son, you you done yourself proud. And, you know. I'm sure your mom would be uh, real proud of you also. For achieving your dreams there, boy. Uh, I'm glad to see you get out from under my feet. He's not going to have the same voice as Clifford. I'm just like practicing Clifford's voice as well. But um, it's good to sort of keep your keep your eye in, sort of thing. Keep your eye in. Keep your ear on. <laughs> keep everything on point. But yeah, we we might go into town and just see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain that's completely full now. Um, but we might go into town and see if anyone needs a lift anywhere. And we'll charge them. I don't know what we should charge people. What do you think, chat? Um, I was thinking, like, $10. That can't, that, I don't know, that seems kind of steep. But then they are getting a premium service. We're going to be driving them across country and, you know... So long as obviously people aren't um, chatting the whole way or whatever, we we might uh, start bringing in stories and things like that, like you know some of the local stuff that's gone on. I think it would be useful actually for that to, to be sort of accurate or whatever for me to do like a little bit of research about um, this single player game and stuff like that. And, um, this guy is he letting me pass? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking um it'd be good to do to play some of the single player, um so that we can talk about some of the buildings and some of the places and stuff in game and be a bit more knowledgeable about it. Um Yeah, this is the, uh, for those of you watching that haven't seen Clifford previously or don't know about this sort of part of his, his backstory, this is the, um, this is the pig farm that, um, Clifford kind of grew up on, helping out his dad. His father runs the, runs the place, so quite good as well that it's actually enterable um so i didn't think that this building what uh, is that not a player's horse is it i don't think so could be never know low in there to shut the door. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the uh, this is the farm that Clifford spent most of his um, life helping his dad out. A little chicken coop there and a press enter to start working. Yeah no we're not gonna do that. We have a job now in inverted commas. One thing I'm thinking that I need to do because um, yesterday, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, but um, Pincaria, um, who plays a Sicilian um, character, uh, gave us a hundred dollars, which is a huge amount of money. 
um, in this game, and um, she uh, she basically said she wanted us to use it to um, set up our business um, and to sort of get things going because we needed we needed to buy the coach, and I was kind of thinking like. Fortunately, the, the staff have been really good um, and helped me out in the respect of um, exchanging the cart that I had, which was $150 for this one, which was, was $120, but like I said earlier, it's not the value of it that's important to me in that sense. Like, it's, it's more it makes sense for us to um, have something that's a little bit more usable for someone like Cliff who's just sort of starting out driving and learning to drive these um, these coaches and sort of not crash <laughs> all the time <laughs> so um, kind of makes sense for us to be able to do that with a, a smaller wagon and because I hadn't used it at all previously and I hadn't actually told anyone in character um, about the, the four horse wagon that we already owned because um, I did like quite a bit of grinding um, a few days a few days ago, or well, probably nearly a week or so ago now. But um, I did a few hours of grinding to uh, to get the money for it, and then was like, yeah, let's just buy it, kind of thing. Let's get it now. And then afterwards, I was a little bit like, shit, I just made a massive mistake because I'm not sure, I'm not sure about this whole force four horse carriage now. Um, but um, it would have been nice. To see, I would have ideally. I wouldn't have minded that other one, if like, for example, you could detach the front two horses because it's they're not really needed, and it's basically the same carriage as this one. The only difference is on that back section there. You can see like where the racking is. Um, there was like a lockbox instead. So on this one, people can get on the back of this. Um, and it's like extra seating or whatever, or, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas on the other one, um, there was a lockbox there, um, and obviously it was four horses instead of two. And I was like, oh, that's actually really cool. So yeah, we could like transport um, valuables and things for people or whatever, and have like, it would have space to store stuff as well. Um, potentially if they bring in storage um, soon as well. Um, so I was thinking, like, maybe it's not so bad that it's four horses, but then I was like, <laughs> after speaking to Crawfish, um, Coolidge's character, and a few other people as well, they were all like, don't, <laughs> don't go with the full one, and I was like, oh shit, it's kind of too late now, but yeah, I was like, hmm, but yeah, as I say, from the goodness of their own hearts, the, uh, the staff, um, did me a huge favour, and, um, and uh, for for thirty dollars, obviously that we miss out on, they've um, they've swapped it over to this one. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. And as I say, we might we might graduate to a, a bigger one later on if they make it so that the horses don't die from like the slightest little thing. And um, I don't know if they can change the handling. Probably not. But. Uh, the um, the four horse one I think would have been really difficult to like. Let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there anyway. Um, I don't know if we want to go. No, I'm not gonna go there now. Hang on, let me just let me just pull up the map so I can kind of show you, so you people understand what I was getting at. Um, when you're going over to Blackwater, this here. This this tight turn here is is impossible to navigate with a four horse thing without killing them because there's rocks all up through there. So as soon as you come round this hairpin, like firstly you might not be able to get round here with the four horse without doing like a fifty million point turn, <laughs> um, and then like killing them as I say potentially those front two horses and then sort of coming down here, and then again it's like kind of rocky and difficult to get through here. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to have um, a wagon where I was constantly like crashing it or you know losing the first two horses and stuff and like 
then becomes like a joke that people are paying to get driven somewhere and then we end up like <laughs> crashed in the middle of nowhere with everyone like going well thanks Cliff like you said you were gonna get take a safe passage you know to uh, to wherever we wanted to go and um, yeah so one thing we're gonna try and work on maybe tonight if um, if it's quiet not least like trying to drum up a bit of business taking people from place to place but also thinking about the cost um, so you know we could say for the moment like five dollars um, to take someone anywhere and on well, I don't know if it's an idea to say like anywhere or like a certain distance up to you know a certain distance let's say from Valentine to Blackwater that might be five dollars but from Valentine down to Armadillo or Tumbleweed or something that might be ten dollars or, or fifteen um, so yeah we um, we need to sort of think about how much it would cost um, and how much people would be willing to spend if you see what I mean as well um, so I don't want to price myself out of taking people on journeys and stuff like that in big groups um, you know we could even say to people that I can take you up into um, the mountains or whatever and you can get your horses from the stables there and go out on a hunting trip or whatever and I'll sort of stay with you and protect you kind of thing and when you're ready to come back after sort of getting all of the, uh, the carcasses and stuff to a, a, the closest butcher and so on then we can all go back by coach and you know do little day trips to places or whatever um, but yeah I want to do a bit of driving around today and just sort of test out how good this um, how good this wagon is. I'm already quite confident myself in like in handling it. I just want to be like we've definitely made the right choice though because like that sort of hairpin turn there with the four horses is it's not impossible but it's <laughs> it's one of those where you're gonna have to do like maybe a few point turn and it's yeah don't want to be taking forever to get people where they want to go on a journey. Um, the body parts there. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, Cliff. Uh, Cliff's chuffed to bits. Oh, Sean's Sean's got on. So we um, don't know if he will have logged out in um, logged out in Valentine or, or where. To be honest with you. Um, He's probably still in Saint Denis. Um, because that's where we left him yesterday. But he did say he's probably um, going to head back from there to Valentine. But obviously, not Valentine. Um, ah, what am I trying to think of roads? So yeah, he might be. He might be in Rhodes, he might be in Saint Denis, he might be in Valentine, but we're just, as I said, we're just going to like have a little mooch about today, see how long we want to go for and stuff as well. See that one there the same one as this so that when when I spawn this in again it might well be that it's like gonna be a blue one or a black one or whatever and there's a gold Turkum on there which I know out of character is um, Sean's horse potentially it might be Sean's horse you just don't know but um, I don't know if there's a way to store this if you see what I mean um, do that. I uh, don't want to buy one, but I can store. Yeah, I don't think there is a way to store it at the moment. Or maybe, I don't know, do we do uh, store? 
would it be store horse? They seem to have a horse out currently. Yeah, no. Um, what happens then if I... I'm guessing if I call my horse, this will just stay here. Um, hmm. Let's not do that then. We, we won't try and mess around. We might end up just leaving this in the middle of the in the middle of Valentine and not being able to move it again or something. That's a bit like shitty for other people. <laughs> you start like uh, populating a large area that's you know very populated with a lot of people moving around a lot um, with vehicles and horses and stuff like that. If we want to, yeah, hang on. Let's um, let's back it up over here. Cliff's mad skills at um, driving already. Look at this. Look at the accuracy of this driving. Top skills. <laughs> This here for a minute. I like that it's got the lanterns and stuff on the side. There was a really funny clip actually of um, it was on Sean's um, stream. I'm not sure. I don't think I was streaming at the time um, myself, but it, I was playing as Miguel. I might have been streaming at the time. I'm not sure. Um, but um, yeah. <laughs> some locals started causing problems um, and uh, <laughs> they shot the lantern on the side of the um, on the side of the coach and everyone jumped out and just started like blowing their heads off and there was two players as well um, and we thought that the players um, there were NPCs as well to start with so we just started emptying clips into them as well it was fucking hilarious. Um, let's go in the general store. Hello. I don't know if that guy Cedric's in there. Hello there. How are you doing today, sir? Or oh, this this fine evening? That's the same one there as well. I like it in black, which is that's a nice sort of uh, color colorway of it. If you see what I mean. Do probably need to buy um, some general provisions and stuff like that. So let's get some some beans. Let's get four four cans of beans will do, and then we'll buy some water. Um, I think how many can we get? Six. Lovely. Quite good if you can rename outfits. Oh, Sean's in. Uh, Sean's in the bar. Let's see if anyone else is around as well. It doesn't look like Valentine's that busy. I also want to check out the price of shotgun ammo because way um, the gunsmith told us the other day. You have yourself a good evening, partner. Oh, uh, I will. Thank you. Um, yeah, Waze, the gunsmith over in um, uh, Rhodes, I keep forgetting the name of the place, um, I wanted ammo, where's ammo? Ah, oh, there it is. Um, shotgun ammo is seven bucks. Because um, when I bought this Lamat revolver that we've got, uh, the main selling point for me was that it's got a, a single barrel shotgun under um, underslung if you see what I mean so 
against like wolves and that kind of thing, or um, maybe the odd player here and there, like trying to mess with us. Good evening there, sir. How are you? Uh, how are you today? Sharpening that knife up now. It's looking mighty fine right there. Gonna do some whittling later on. Oh, you were. Uh, you're just gonna shave with it. Okay. Well, I'll leave you to that. I'm kind of surprised, man. Valentine's empty. Um. But yeah, Wei was saying to us that you need to buy the shotgun ammo, and I, I had just thought like you know it would come with both ammo types or whatever potentially, but um, obviously it doesn't. So. Someone smashed the windows of the bank out. So how much money do we have? 115 bucks. See, I want to save the hundred dollars so that when we're ready to, we can register as a f an official business. If you see what I mean. Um, but right now, I want to sort of keep that uh, in the in the bank and in the background um, because I'm thinking. I'm not sure how much a pump action shotgun is. I, th I think the pump action is something like um, $150 now. We'll just go and check. Um, I'm pretty sure way um, the guy in Rhodes gunsmith there was saying that he, um, he would do it for cheaper if he gets one second hand kind of thing. But yeah, $150. Bucks. Um, and he said also he would buy Miguel's double barrel shotgun if I wanted to sell it to him for a hundred bucks. So that's a hundred percent profit from. Um, we bought it from um, Hydra for fifty bucks when well before the um, the prices changed. And like literally, we we bought it from him, and then the day later um, he. Uh, he realised that the uh, the value of it had gone up, and then was like, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> yeah, I would have given him more money anyway, but um, I didn't have more money on me at the time. I don't think to be able to buy it. Um, right, so we want to get seven bucks so that we can get some ammo, the shotgun, the underslung barrel. And then, like I say, eventually, I think we'll either use the hundred hey, bucks for um, we'll either use that hundred bucks for the business license, or we'll use it for um, the shotgun when we buy it. So, does that mean if I pull this pull this sucker out here now, we go? Hey, hey, hey. One in there, in the barrel as well. All right. So yeah, in a pinch, we can pull that out and just flap. <laughs> Murder someone. Don't see Mr. Choppins now. Oh, there he is. He sat down. Is, is he having date night with someone? Yeah. Isn't it, uh, isn't it nice that you and I can sit across from each other and uh, talk about this as friends? Honestly, there's no ill temperament between the friends. I mean, I suppose a. Uh... Some of you may call could be quite snobby, but I suppose uh, some of the British can be quite egotistical. What's the difference? <laughs> we can see it. Perhaps, uh, you know, since we are not so different, that why we are getting along so famously, don't you think? Yes, that's why I call, that's why I call. 
don't want to go and just like jump into their conversation because obviously he's right in the midst of chatting with someone. It's a bit rude and it's just generally you don't do that with RP. But uh thinking about buying something as, as well earlier I can't remember if it's the general store that you get it from I'm thinking about needing a lantern and I'm pretty sure a lantern's gonna be like I think uh, I don't know there's two versions of the lantern and I can't remember if it's here or if it's at the general um, if it's at the gun store we're in the general store um, where we buy it uh, I don't know what the lucky rabbit foot is for. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with like gold panning or um, stuff like where there's a, an element of RNG, like the fishing. Um, binoculars you buy here, so yeah, I think it is. It is the gun store then. We'll buy a buy a lantern now as well. Ooh. Whoa! It's kind of close. Well, not that close, but <laughs> certainly very loud. Um, draw. I th as I say, I think this is five dollars. If it's not, then yeah. If it's not, then screw it. <laughs> we won't buy it. Hey there, sir. You uh, look like a, you had a little bit too much to drink there. We need a we need a ride home. Uh, I can offer you a lift. No, I think he uh, he's just gonna stumble his way home. Hoping it's um it's in here. It's gonna be under other. Is that it? Yeah, lantern. Five bucks. Perfect. It's the sort of thing Clinton would need. Clinton Clifford. <laughs> Thinking of Clinton card store for some reason. I don't know why. Clifford. Jeez, the lightning is crazy tonight. Absolutely crazy. Well, there's no one. There's no one here, and um, I can see that Sean's still having a good old chat with um, the lady there. So I think what we might do is um, go back over to Rhodes and just see if anyone's in Rhodes and needs a lift somewhere. Presumably, our um, our coach is still around the back here. Uh, howdy. Uh, good evening, there, sir. You okay, there, ma'am? nice and light lit up. That's good. I'm really glad that we've uh, we managed to get that sorted. Two horses are better than four, a lot of people were saying. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> needs a lift somewhere and hopefully we can make a little bit of money as well start paying back on the uh, the investment still blown away though by um Trincaria, um or um rosa messina is the name um 
Actually, she did say. I don't know if I don't know that she's on, but we we might want to check our. Um, how do you check telegrams again? Is it? Oh, I don't. I don't know if I can do it on. On horseback. Let's just get out of town so we're not like just stood in the middle of the way of everyone. I'm sure there was um. I'm sure you could pick up personal telegrams or something. Um, let's just put ourselves here for a second, I think. I think I have to get off the... Yeah, we do. Ooh. Sorting telegrams. Ain't no telegrams. No, okay. That's alright. Oh. Huh. Oh, I think you start with some water as well, don't you? Yeah. You know, I think that's the first time we've opened the um the inventory and actually had a proper look through it <laughs> as Cliff. Shall we plot a Let's do um, let's do a little bit of a cinematic ride. So I'm going to plot the course over to Rhodes. Uh, why would it take us that way? I suppose we can go that way. Yeah, I think um. We'll go for a nice little cinematic nighttime ride or drive. That would be. Does that not work? About to, well, you can't do that. Huh. What are you waiting for? That's a shame. I don't know if that's um. Or well, maybe, maybe you can. You just have to keep your finger on A or on Shift. It's st it's staying on the road, but it's um. Not doing the uh, doing the thing like auto riding. If you see what I mean, like a horse does. Yeah, I think that must be the case. I think when we go past Emerald Ranch, maybe we'll, uh, we'll call in Emerald Ranch. See if there's uh, anyone around who needs a. Uh, a ride somewhere or whatever. I do like the cinematic angles. It's nice. I kind of like that you can press um, click in the thumbstick so that it uh, changes the angle as well. What? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Why? <laughs> Let's just have a look at that that route that it sent us on. So we were here when we went on this route and it's gone like, oh, instead of going here and carrying on down over here, I'm going to make you go down here. <laughs> I know that that's where my route's going to. 
but you would have thought like because we were as I say like we weren't there actually we were up here somewhere when we were there it would have just said okay well you can go down here instead of going all the way up here and then turning here and then going across country there and uh, kind of a roundabout way of doing it GG right well let's forget let's forget cinematic mode then for the moment we'll we'll do it manually fuck it do it live Morning to you, sir. Fine morning it is also. Pick up the pace a little bit. See how fast we can go. It's one thing I do like with the uh, the carriages. You don't have to keep whacking A or whatever all the time to keep the speed. You just hold it after uh, after you've set your speed, sort of thing, and it will just keep going. Now the route's changed. Cliff's having a good old time learning how to drive. Well, not learning how to drive, but learning how to do things at a, at a reasonable speed. Is that? That's lovely. Sun coming up. I was seeing yesterday when I was about to go to bed <laughs> about 4.35 in the morning nearly <laughs> let's go down and uh, check in on Emerald Ranch and see if anyone needs a lift here so it's 2 o'clock at the moment my time You know what I'm kind of surprised to see is um, that there aren't a load of dead cows and stuff here because I noticed a little while ago there was a there was an influx of a certain number of people on the whitelist or whatever that um, in order to make money they were just going and killing this stuff over here in Emerald Ranch and then coming back. Like I remember one of the characters actually said to Miguel in um, in character like. Um, if you want to get, you know, good good quality skins and things like that all the time, you can just go to Emerald Ranch, and especially if you go at night time and you can kill them like that. It's like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't need to do that, dude. <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, also like, that's like a typical sort of Red Dead Online kind of trick. Um, it's what everyone used to do actually back in the days when it first started and. Basically, hunting was pretty much the only way to earn a reasonable amount of money. What's going on with that? Is that, is that meant to be like that? It's a shame you can't pet the cats. Uh, hmm. I'd have expected to see someone here, but... Every time I come to uh, Emerald Ranch, it's completely deserted. It's one of those places that it just seems to like go in um, go in shifts. And I'm I'm obviously ne not on at the time when um, people that do sort of hang out here are on. If you see what I mean, or we've just missed them or something. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad that. Um, we got that other outfit sorted as well. Because even if um, even if we still need to buy um, jacket for it, we might buy this same jacket if you see what I mean for um, for that outfit. And then um, we'll uh, have the waistcoat and everything else underneath it.
yeah, I did like um, I did like the look of that outfit, and it fits the style. If you see what I mean of the um, of the saloon, and this this is like I think this should be our driving outfit, and then when we're working, if we work security or if we work like just helping on the bar or whatever in um, in the saloon as well, we'll um, we'll wear the other outfit with just the waistcoat. Morning to you, sir. But yeah, it's just a bit of a chill night tonight. I'm getting used to driving around and you never know, we might see... I uh, don't know if... Um, I was hoping that um, Trincari, the um, lady who helped us out with that money yesterday, um, would be on so that we could... Um, we could drop by and say to her, look, this is what you helped us get. She doesn't need to know that we <laughs> the hundred dollars is sat in the bank. Um, and uh, it's going to probably be used to uh, like officially start business, if you see what I mean. Um, at the moment, we just want to have a little ride around and... Yeah, if we run into uh, if we run into people, it's all good. We can let them know about the business and that we're going to be starting up officially fairly soon. Now that we've got the uh, the coach, and if they want to ride somewhere, we'll take them for a ride. So yeah, I think the next thing we're going to do after we've after we've accumulated enough money. In fact, we might do it today. We might go over to Ansberg um, and accumulate. Maybe if we do a couple of runs there, because the um, character Bjorn, played by Varko, um, was telling us that if you go over there and do a delivery. Um, for the guy that's there, um, you'll get like forty-eight dollars or something like that. Um, so it's kind of a quick way for us to earn enough to be able to buy the shotgun. I don't want to. I don't want to use the hundred bucks that um, Rosa's given us um, on buying the shotgun as sort of protection. Oh, that's let this guy come through. Afternoon, Morning. sir. Well, it's, it's kind of afternoon, my friend. I don't know when you woke up, but... Uh... It's pretty much midday right now, I'd say. Is actually a um can you do I know alt used to be on Red Dead Online it was like the way to bring up the expanded thing and tell you what area you're in at the moment and um, what time it was 
in the in-game time, if you see what I mean, but it um, doesn't seem to be like that now. Yeah, we'll um, go along this way, because I actually prefer this way coming into town. And it brings us up right alongside the saloon. Come a long way for um, for Cliff in quite a short amount of time. I mean, obviously it's been like I would call it maybe a couple of months or something of him being around now. You see what I mean? Obviously he's lived in roads and stuff his whole life, but. Um, in terms of the sort of time he's been around, you see what I mean? Um, it's like, I would say sort of a couple of months of in-game time, or a month of in-game time. I don't know if that's a player on the back of that, if that's a wagon drawn by another player, or... Um, Or what, but yeah, let's have a little nose in the uh, in the saloon, see if anyone's around. Wouldn't it be just my luck if today all of the people that are on in general are like over in a completely different area? <laughs> problem about being in roads is that you get really dusty really quickly. I had a very good Afternoon, ma'am. It's everybody saying morning for it's afternoon already. These people don't know when to get up. She is. <laughs> How do you do? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, no disrespect, but yeah, the the NPCs are looking Good morning to you, sir. pretty butters today. Hey, how are you doing, my friend? How do you do? What is that on her head? That's a weird ass looking hat. What the fuck is that? Good morning to you. Looks like a puffer fish has been like <laughs> sliced in half and stretched over the top of that thing. What the fuck? <laughs> well, ain't nobody here. Shep ain't upstairs doing his gambling thing. It's funny the other day when um, he was messing with Theodore. I think he was doing. Um, he was doing one of these on the doors and then when they all tried to come upstairs he like ran out ran off outside it was like doing that shit and then sneaking off out the back Running down the side here or whatever, booting the, uh, booting the side of the uh, thing. No, can you can you do that? How? Hmm. I don't know how he was kicking that then. No. I'm gonna do that. This ain't good. Damn it! Oh, don't, don't worry, I'm. I ain't mean to scare you, my friend. Oh, well, that was a bullet wasted, but never mind. <laughs> I forgot that if you just press fire, it will just shoot from the hip straight away. Like, just pull it out and like, pap, pap, pap. Shows you how much PVP I've tended to do in this game. Even in online and stuff, 
never really felt the need. Except for when people like try and shoot me. I've got a fair number of clips actually that I might edit down one day and make into like a little best shots video of uh, times where Miguel's just taken people's heads off online. I remember there was one time actually it made me fucking laugh because um, I knew it was going to happen as well. I was just like riding along. I can pretty much show you on the map exactly where it happened as well. It's kind of like um, let's just get rid of this marker by the way. Um, I was I think we were around about there um, or around here maybe. Uh, yeah, it's one of these. It's in basically in that circle right there somewhere that I'm drawing with the mouse. Anyway, we were riding along, and I could see a player coming in the opposite direction. And I'm whenever I see a player coming in the opposite direction in Red Dead Online, I'm like, yeah, this is probably going to end in like him trying to take a shot at me or do something. So as I'm riding past him, he didn't say anything or do anything, and like at that exact moment. But as soon as he rode past, I like did the old like. Have a little look over the shoulder kind of thing while I'm riding and I see him pulling out his gun and I'm like okay here we go and I waited and I thought maybe he's not gonna shoot like a split second later he shoots and like um doesn't kill me um but I turned around instantly I like whipped out my um repeater and just blew his head off like one shot straight away it was just like nah dude nah <laughs> ain't gonna go down like that <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. Let's see if Way's online. Um, or if Way's in, we should say. I'd like to see if uh, he has a deal for us on the, uh, the shotgun. You uh, you here, Way? Hello, Way. You awake, my friend? Uh, Knock knock. Hmm. Nah, obviously. He ain't here. He ain't online today. Well, if he is, he might be over in Rhodes. I don't know who the person that plays him is. Afternoon, sir. Hey, Glasgow, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're well. Oh, thanks for the host, mate. Howdy. Afternoon, sir. We've um, we've bought our little uh, coach over there there doesn't seem to be anyone online well there's there's plenty of people online it's a full server but um, wherever we've been going Sean I saw Sean over in Valentine um, but he was talking to a French character um, so I didn't want to just like go and ins insert myself into the RP or, or whatever um, not the best of days, but how are you enjoying this character? Ah, uh, yeah, sorry to hear that, man. Um, if you want to talk about it, you can um, you can always talk and stuff, man. Um, yeah, sorry to hear that you've not had a had a particularly good one. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying him. We've um, don't know if you saw yesterday's um, vod or anything, but um, we actually had um had a really nice moment where um, there's a character called Rosa Messina um, she's an Italian well Sicilian because in Italy you do differentiate or the Sicilians differentiate between Italy and um, Sicily even though it is part of um, part of Italy obviously um, <laughs> that um, Sicily is not yeah Italy, but anyway, so this this Sicilian character um, comes over and she um, she stops and talks to us and asks us about what we what we're trying to achieve 
essentially and what you know what we're what we're doing in um in roads and i was sort of saying look i want to i want to buy myself a wagon and um i want to transport people from place to place and um you know offer offer a, a service to um to take people wherever they want to go for a for a fee um and she was just like she wandered straight into the bank like we were literally just over there um by the by the statue there and um she wanders she says like oh one moment she goes off into the bank and i was just thinking oh she's probably just going to get some cash and stuff to buy some stuff from the um general store and um she comes out and she says like um you know i'm just gonna get my purse out and i was thinking like oh you know so i said to her oh no you you don't have to give me no money or nothing like that um and she gave me a hundred dollars um <laughs> which was like it was kind of it was amazing it's, it was shocking though because it's like obviously in this game it's a lot of money um but she was saying like obviously i'm she wants people um not to be sort of based around valentine all the time and i'd mentioned that i'd gone around doing um deliveries and stuff for people um in valentine and she said oh yeah i'm trying to ask the uh, the state to move the um the delivery places from valentine and spread them out across the map a bit because the focus is just too much around valentine you you know what this this is like anyway obviously you've seen it before but just like the density of stuff to do is pretty much like centered around valentine um so you've got that delivery guy there there's also a delivery woman here um that you can do work for and um there's a delivery place in the saloon that you can do stuff as well oh hang on uh mum's rushed into hospital with stroke-like symptoms the right side of her mouth was froze shut oh mate Maybe the cat scan came back okay i was trying to get some sleep and woke up taking a massive panic attack so here i am talking to someone to, to, i feel comfortable around Oh mate, I'm really sorry to hear that, and I hope um, I hope she makes a, a full, full sort of recovery in that sense. Um, I know one thing that helps me with my panic attack. I wish I had a camera so that I could show you, but um, if you take um, one thing, I find helps me a lot um, when I start having them on. Um, come on, like I've I've had ones that feel like. Um, Feel like i'm having a heart attack or something like that sometimes and if you take your right hand put it like under your armpit so you're kind of cupping like the side of your chest um and then take your left hand your left arm and put your left hand on your um tricep on your right arm and then just like breathe deeply i find it's best if i lie down when i'm doing it as well um, but like if you breathe deeply um, it um, it sort of helps to subside um, a little faster for me um, take like 30 panic panic attacks a day mate I'm used to it yeah it's it's really hard um, I know exactly how it can be with like panic attacks and stuff like that but as long as you've got like ways of sort of coping with it I think it's it's half the battle um, and knowing that to a degree some of it is sort of controllable in that sense um yeah mate i'm really sorry to hear about your mum and and that sort of thing as well so as i say like if ever you need to talk or just you know you want to vent or whatever then feel free um try and be as supportive as i can for people um in general because mental health is um is hard to deal with and yeah it's certainly not nice to sort of have to do it alone um Hello. sure from real bad anxiety and depression uh changes something that kicks it off that's why i took this one yeah um it's the same for me in in a lot of respects um like particularly sort of um situations maybe that some people wouldn't think are that stressful either um, Why on earth are you doing this? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Would you mind moving out the way? I'm trying to. I'm trying to turn here, sir. Hey, 
Hey, stupid! Out of the way! Why are you troubling people? You just that goes about. That goes about to try and kill us if I don't move on. Um. But yeah, I know. I know what you're going through, man. It's um, it's hard, and like I say, it's for me. It's like um, particularly like situations that people wouldn't think of as being kind of stressful or a cause for anxiety like for me it's like yeah it, it can become something that's way overblown because of the way I think as well I overanalyze stuff really badly and um, it's something I've been trying to work on myself in that sense um, but yeah this is for me, like this is that's what um, streaming and doing the voices and stuff like that is all about. Really, it's just like trying to relieve the sort of stress and the you know the anxiety and depression that I feel as well. So it's it's a nice way for me to sort of just have a kind of a creative outlet and feel like I'm you know I can just be myself and just talk and just talk to no one or to people if there's people in the chat and stuff. You know, I don't mind. <laughs> feel like I talk to myself quite a lot sometimes anyway you know um, but yeah I feel like I've had sort of undiagnosed adult ADD um, because I find myself like particularly with like streams and stuff like that um, if I'm not like watching something specific that's like gonna get me really involved and so on I can just go off on tangents for for ages like I'll just end up like I'll open up like 10 different tabs on YouTube or Twitch or whatever when I'm watching other people and stuff and I'm just like oh this this guy seems interesting I'll watch this stuff and then, like I watch that for a little bit and then like two minutes later I'm like oh actually this this one looks interesting and I just and I can't sort of settle on doing stuff like I find it hard to focus sometimes those guys look like players, maybe, but I don't know. Oh well. One in there, sirs. Evening, friend. Things, eh? Yeah, and that, that's the thing for me. I'm like, I don't, I don't necessarily want this to become like a job or anything like that or whatever um i just i just enjoy doing it and stuff and i like i i like i enjoy the fact that other people you know like you said you you enjoy sort of sitting back and just letting watching other people or relaxing and that kind of thing like i, I don't mind you know if i had like no one watching or if i've got like 100 people watching or something like just for me it's like a release um to do this kind of thing and it's I, as i say because i've always liked doing creative um things in in terms of like using using my voice and stuff like that to like do funny accents and f funny voices and noises and stuff like that um ever since i was like a child so it just kind of gives me a, <laughs> an op opportunity to still be a bit of a child <laughs> which is what it's all about like I feel like life is life can come at you really fast and it can be really serious and hard at times and like this for me just feels like I'm kind of able to enjoy things and just do whatever I please kind of and yeah um, but yeah it's um it's hard in life with you know why in God's good name aren't you affiliated? Mate, I mean, I've only been streaming for, um... Oh, I'm trying to think. Um... I don't know when I started streaming again, but, um... If you look back in my videos, you probably see it's probably about a month or so maybe less um, and I've obviously I've not been streaming every day or anything like that but um, 
It's probably as well that I don't, I mean, I don't stream for very long quite often, which is something I'll, I kind of like to change. Like, I was speaking to Doobie and um, Sean and a couple of other people about, like, maybe trying to bring the, the start time, if you see what I mean, um, forwards a bit. And Doobie um, has been saying as well for a little while that he wants to do that. There's a couple of other people that stream um, and that, you know, I roleplay with as well. Um, in the past who've all sort of said that they want to start getting on a little bit earlier so it might be that we start doing it a bit more and you know just through being around more being online more to to stream um i might end up being affiliate or whatever in the end but it's not like a it's not really like a, a goal um if you see what i mean like as, as i say if it comes as a sort of a as an aside from doing this and you know people enjoy the stuff then all, all the better but it's not like I'm setting out to become a streamer or you know <laughs> that I'll jack in my job and, and go like full time doing Twitch and stuff because I know how hard it can be to try and to do to try and do that as a living um and one of my good buddies Minder um who's um Daisy streamer and well Daisy and um, Escape from Tarkov and uh, a few other games and, and stuff as well but mainly Daisy has been his, his sort of bread and butter um, he's been streaming for a long long time and um, he's you know, he's at the point where he's got enough people to um, you know sort of keep him going and everything but I know for him like he said a few times that it's kind of it is it is hard work like um, if you make it your job and stuff and I think it's it's difficult um, to keep the enjoyment if it's if it starts feeling like um, feeling like work rather than just something you enjoy doing so I'm you know I, I haven't sort of set out with the idea in mind to like become a streamer or whatever and so on like it's gonna be like a thing that I'll do occasionally and you know if I can fit it in with um with work when I eventually get back to back to a um a state of um feeling like I can go back to work again um if it's something that I can fit in with all of that as well then I'll do that but um I don't want to sort of um, impact on my work life too much either but yeah um, you never know what doors open and stuff like that as well like the thing I'd love to do most in life like <laughs> obviously I don't want to work for um, retail companies or whatever anymore um, like long term that's not really what I want to do anyway so what I'd like to do is be um, I'm quite into my golf and sport and stuff in general um, but I've always loved golf and um, it's something that I've sort of enjoyed through my whole life and I would love to be like the on-course analyst if you see what I mean or the commentator um, like Peter Alice or um, Ken Brown those kind of guys that are out like watching going around with the pros and stuff and like watching the um watching them play and, and everything like that and um you know commentating on the shots and the stuff that they're taking or you know you know he's about 180 yards out it looks like he's got about an eight iron in hand he's probably going to look to try and play this left to right got a breeze coming from the uh the right hand side of the hole he's got to aim a little bit into that breeze to bring the ball around and oh he's played a fantastic shot there and he's he's about 10 feet 10 feet from the uh from the flag there it's a wonderful shot i'd just love to do that i can i could wax lyrical about golf and sport probably in general i talk so much shit <laughs> shit in my fucking <laughs> streams it's like yeah um I could probably end up talking random bollocks for England, but um, I think that would be like an ideal job. So kind of what I would love to do is getting back on topic now. You see, this is what I mean about having undiagnosed ADD. Um, 
100% not my other account following. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, mate. <laughs> it's appreciated. Um, but yeah, this is what I mean about like the way the way that my brain functions. Um, I just go off on tangents and stuff like that. But yeah, um, when I'm really into something, I can be really focused on it and I can give it like 110% the whole time. Um, but with working in retail, it like Oh man, it's um, it just crushes you. Is what what comes what becomes very apparent, and what's happened with this whole COVID thing, Nate, is like I've just realised how shitty people are in general. Um, it didn't help as well that I was having like um, you know, a lot of problems with my anxiety and depression and stuff leading up into it. Um. So when COVID hit really hard, and we were still going into work um, where I'm where I was working, um, you know, full time, and they weren't taking proper precautions, and you know, mate, I had a this this was like the the cherry on the on the cake for me when I went into work one day, and um, they they were talking about lockdown and everything like that, um, you know and how we're going to have to sort of start restricting the number of people coming into the store and I'd already said like I wasn't I wasn't comfortable being out on the shop floor because not only were we getting lots of people just being like right in our face um, wanting you know items that weren't in stock or whatever and just getting really narky with everyone um, but also like they weren't limiting the amount of people coming into the store even though they said that you know we're going to limit the amount of people coming in at any one time and stuff like that so I'd, I'd said to them like you know what's what's the store limit and um, the manager said to me I'm um, like the the duty manager for the day I um, said oh it's a thousand people and I was like are you kidding me he's like no it's a thousand people and I was like what allowed to come in the store at any one time even with this COVID thing and he's like yeah so I just said I'm not comfortable being out here like as it is let alone like without any proper sort of restriction on the number of people that can come in any one time um, like that and um, he was like oh sorry but that's just how it is kind of thing that's what we've been told by management that that's just how it's going to be um, so everyone's got to kind of suck it up and deal with it so I asked them if I could be put into an admin position in the back um, or doing like um, telephony or whatever instead so that I wasn't right there on the shop floor because it just felt like people don't give a shit like, and particularly in, in retail like um, even before COVID we were getting so many people complaining and the area that I live in as well in the UK is apparently one of the worst for um, retail complaints there's a lot of very entitled people um, who just like if you haven't got something they want to know why you haven't got it and if you can't order it in they want to know why you can't order it in like and they think that you're like you just genuinely don't want to help them like, you're trying to bend over backwards to help them but like they look at it as if like oh he doesn't want to do it um, but yeah I got to a point where I was just like mate I'm not I'm not going to be trodden on by people who are made to feel like shit and stuff so when all of this started kicking off I was like yeah I'm not I'm not comfortable being outside in um, in the aisles with people that are not only getting aggressive about not being able to get their can of paint now because it's not deemed essential, um, but also that you know they're just being right up in your face about um, everything as well. And yeah, it's not good. It's not good. You hate golf, not going to lie, but you chase your dreams. You n you're never too old. This is it. I mean, the thing, thing I always sort of thought, if ever I was in a job where I became like, like a voiceover or whatever, like that kind of thing, I don't want to be an actor. I don't want to be like a celebrity or anything like that. I don't, I don't necessarily want people to know what I look like or that kind of thing. I'm quite a private person anyway, and I just sort of thought like commentary and that sort of thing is ideal for me because I can still 
express myself and I can be, you know, I can be myself and, and do things the way I want to do it, um, obviously up to a point. <laughs> um, this guy... I think that is that is a player, isn't it? Pretty sure. I'm just going to park up here and see if anyone's in town so we can give a lift to. I'm pretty sure that's a. Don't know. Might not be. Okay, there, sir. Must be a mighty interesting book you got there. I thought that was a player. Um, yeah, COVID made me see a few people I once considered friends in a new light. It's done that to me as well in some respects. Like, um, I'm not going to lie, I've fallen out with some people. Um, and this, the Black Lives Matter thing as well, is really like, again, that's like painted some of the people that you know I thought were good decent human beings in a different light as well like I've discovered that a few people that I know are quite badly racist and it's just like are you for real like and they don't seem to understand um like how they're how they're being racist or um why you see what I mean um like one of them I don't know if you saw this whole palaver about um, someone had um, someone at a Burnley football match, I think it was a little while ago, had um, had flown a had paid for a uh, a plane or something to fly a banner over the stadium saying "White Lives Matter," and I was just like, "You've got to be fucking kidding me, man!" Like how to undermine an entire movement in like one fell swoop and just prove like how racist you know some people in the UK are um it's just fucking it beggars belief mate and some of the people that I work with um I knew a few of them were, were racist um and I you know every time they started saying stuff like that I'd always kind of like I'd either remove myself from the conversation or I'd like put my foot down and say nah man like what you're saying is actually bang out of order and it's it's racism um and I'm not like I'm not I'm not dealing with that um and I need to tell you why like it's a problem for me and it's a problem that you you still behave this way kind of thing. um and they don't understand it and they're like, well, why is this, you know, why is this any different? Like, you know, white lives matter as much as anyone else and stuff. And like, yeah, to, to a degree, I understand what they're saying. Like they're trying to, they're trying to make out maybe that everyone's lives matter. And that's true. They do, but they've not white people like myself haven't been through 400 years of oppression. And that's that's the kicker like right there it's like these people are like <laughs> saying this all lives matter or white lives matter and stuff like that um you know and saying it's like it's racism for people to say that it's that like black lives matter why is it only black lives or whatever and it's just like you're not seeing the bigger picture just don't understand <laughs> why you can't get this but yeah at the moment this is the this is the key thing in you know in the in the world and no matter how you want to cut it that's how things have been for 400 years um and it's just not right to be like trying to use a movement and say all lives matter and da 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 just makes me think like i was saying this actually on a stream previously if there's like and i'm sure that you know somewhere in this um somewhere in this vast universe um, there are obviously other extraterrestrial races and species, etc., flying around, etc. Because um, the possibility of an of a universe that's infinite is infinite in itself. If you see what I mean, that's just like it's kind of a scientific way of looking at it. Um, but 
you have to look at that as an you know if the universe is infinite then the possibilities of things that can happen in that universe are infinite as well so you kind of have to be open to the suggestion there's you know other alien races extraterrestrial races etc maybe exactly like us around flying around as i say um if aliens and extraterrestrials and so forth exist and they're visiting earth etc they'll have seen how fucking awful humanity is and that will be the reason why they've not come down and you know decided to sort of take us in and say like you know this is you know there's a there's a much bigger universe out there than you think and there's all of these other things that are going on and stuff but you're not part of it because we think if ever you were given the technology and stuff mankind the way we are right now we would just try and it would be whoever's in power at the time would try just to wipe out every other race or every other religion or whatever at that time um they're trying to wipe everyone else off the face of the planet out and it would be like yeah we <laughs> how could you possibly entrust so much power to some people that are so fucked up um so yeah i think if ever there was um that sort of thing in life it's um it's not going to happen at least in our in my lifetime maybe maybe if everyone can just start getting along mm. hello uh, how do you uh, how do you do there sirs you think you look tough hiding behind that tough but hiding behind what sir i don't know what you Why mean But yeah, that's my um, that's my two cents on the subject. I don't like to get too political or whatever, but I feel unfortunately with um with some of my friends and and people, I've had to had to get like that. You see what I mean? It's actually one one incident a while ago. I had to speak to um my mum fairly sternly about the way she was acting. We were over in America. And we were in Miami, which is um, it's an area where there's a lot of um, Latin American um, and Latino Hispanic people and so forth. Um, and um, she was being racist, basically, by saying, like, why are these people in the in this mall in Miami? Hello there. Why are these people in this mall in Miami? Um, not speaking in English because um, she was trying to ask a lady who's um, Spanish um, speaking in um, English like um, I don't know exactly what it was again she was uh, she was buying something or trying to buy something anyway we were, but this lady didn't understand um, English particularly well and my mum was getting like, like she was doing that typical English thing where she was trying to talk louder and say like why don't you speak English and stuff like that? And I like I took her to to the side and I was just like, Mum, you're being fucking racist. Like, we're in their country. Miami, in general, is um, uh, like probably one of the Hispanic um capitals of America. If you wanna, if you wanna talk, put it that way, if you see what I mean. Um, and we're in their country. And you need to respect that not everyone here is going to speak English um, or whatever. So like, if that lady doesn't understand, then it's not a problem, surely, to go and ask someone else and not be, like, snooty and say, like, oh, you know, she doesn't speak English or, you know, that kind of stuff. Because, like, again, like I say, it's, it's racist. We expect other people in countries, you know, different to ours to speak English and shit, and it shouldn't be how it how it is. But unfortunately, there's certain generations of people, um, and my mum's generation is one that are like a little bit like that. And I've said to her previously, like you've got to stop doing that, because when we've been in like Indian restaurants and stuff like that as well, again she does it as well to the staff in there, and it's like, come on, like you can stop this shit now. It's fucking, it's terrible to be talking down to people like that. Um, 
I've been a big believer of always treating everyone how I'd like to be treated myself, like until someone proves otherwise and, you know, proves himself to be a complete arsehole. That's the, that's the point when you'll get my back up, but it won't be because of the colour of your skin or the religion or your political beliefs, etc, etc. It will be because you are genuinely a nasty piece of work. And I find it's actually more British and white people that tend to be like that than any other people that I've ever met in my life. So yeah, it's it's sad, but unfortunately. Eastern Star, okay. Eastern Star. The train, Excuse me there, sir. Uh, down to District 4. Alright, I got it. Alright. Morning there, sirs. Mm -hmm. Morning. Hello. Hello there. I think that was, I think that was Kados. Or Kato. He's a, he's a nice guy. I don't think we've got any money. I was just gonna come in here and buy a buy a beer, but um, yeah. Oh well, I think he's going off upstairs uh, for whatever reason. But there's a bunch of people outside, not really doing much, standing around the saloon. But yeah, here you go. Um, do we have any beers on us? I don't think we do. Tell you what, let's go and get a bit of money out and let's just buy a beer and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see what's so what. prone to danger. What's that? So Shadow is prone to Jane. Excuse danger. me, dear. Oh there, calm down. Yeah, I believe in treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, stupidity runs deep in the culture of these lands. Yeah, it does, mate. It's, it's unfortunate, but that is kind of how a lot of um, British people grow up. Wait, what? Uh, withdraw three. Did I click? Yeah, <laughs> I clicked deposit, didn't I? I was like trying to deposit three dollars that I didn't have. GG, well done, mate. It's <laughs> good, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it does. It does seem to be the way. Like because Britain's had a history of conquering countries and the empire and you know, building and stuff like that everyone sort of thinks that it's the good old days and shit and that people can still be as racist as they like and whatnot and it's just not how things should be in the world anymore so yeah it's high time that um things moved forwards and people started just getting on and not using a you know, not using a um, uh, we'll just buy three beers. Not using you know religion and all the rest of that kind of caper as a reason to sort of differentiate themselves from other people and stuff. Like good people are good people, bad people are bad people. You're going to have those people in every different walk of life, every different race, every different religion, and so forth. It's just you don't. Don't mix with those people if you can possibly avoid it, and wherever possible, like try and try and talk sense to them, and just try and get to the bottom even of why they why they like that. Um, it was weird. We were in um, Mallorca um, about a year or two ago, about a year and a half, I think, something like that. We were in Mallorca, I'm um, in Spain, and um, there's uh, there's a lot of German people who go on holiday um, to Mallorca. Not just German people, obviously as well, like um, a lot of Dutch people and uh, people from all over. But anyway, this particular town um, in Mallorca is kind of um, infamous for having a lot of German um, people live there um, to a point where. A lot of the staff actually 
in um, restaurants and bars and so forth um, speak fluent German um, and they speak fluent English and they speak Spanish and, and so on as well because obviously it's in Spain um, so you're expected to know the local language um, but a lot of the people there are you know bi or trilingual um, anyway we were in this um, in this town and um, uh, I saw a German couple um, and the guy um, the guy was like tattooed sort of head to toe and so was his um, so was his wife um, or girlfriend whatever um, and um, they were tattooed sort of head to toe and everything um, but on closer inspection all of the tattoos were um, Nazi symbols and like stuff to do with like basically um, Nazism no other way of putting it um, and I'm kind of like I'm kind of inquisitive in the fact that I would want to I, I said to my parents like I'm, I'm not going to do this um, but I wanted to stop the guy and ask him why like why why do you think like that if you see what I mean like why do you believe like in those sorts of ideals if you, if you want to put inverted commas around it um, because I just think like yeah differentiating yourself or whatever based on the sort of factors that Nazis did and do is a hideous dangerous awful way to think um, but um, I wanted to like I wanted to speak to the guy and just say like why what what brought you to the point of tattooing your body and like tattooing these Nazi um, slogans and messages and stuff like that on your body because I, I can speak a bit of German and I, I translated some of the stuff and I was just like fucking hell man like this is real fucking proper you know far right nationalist um, Aryan type stuff and I was just like this is just like that's it's beyond like comprehension for me um, but I just wanted to sit the guy down and say to him like mate like talk to me what's what's the deal here like why why are you like this because um, I wanted just to be able to speak to him and go like he realized that like this six billion people on the planet and whoever's made you feel like this about certain religions or races etc like they're not the same as every other person of that um, background and so forth. Like, everyone is different. Like, you know, maybe they were, I don't know. It's hard to sort of pin a reason that would make me want to hate an entire, like, group of people or whatever. Um, and I don't think I could ever be capable of doing that. But it, um, it just, you know, sort of boggled my mind, really, that, like, someone would tattoo their body and stuff with all these slogans and shit and just like yeah treat people that are different to them um, with such disdain that they would want them wiped out off the face of the earth it's just fucking incredible mate but yeah sad really But I think it's going to be, it's a generational thing as well and, you know, hopefully the children of our children, if not our own generation, would be the ones that um, finally start turning this around so that the world is like an inclusive place for everyone to be, so there's no discrimination based on, you know, race sexist sexism or you know whether someone's gay or bi or whatever um it shouldn't be an issue for people just like fucking get over it man like this is we're, we're past all of that now should be but unfortunately that's not the case for everyone so i don't know where um i don't know where sean is oh he's gone by the looks of it um, not far off of um, 
I'm not far off from logging off, I think, though, on myself. Didn't really want to go and insert myself in that big group of people over in Ballantyne and stuff. Everyone seemed to be chatting about something in, in general. It's the first time that I've met them all, so I didn't really want to just go and go, Hello, I'm Cliff. Ah. Oh. Just, just talking about, just talking about um, not wanting to get too political, and then go on a rant for ten minutes about some Nazi. But yeah, whatever. Let's try and move on. <laughs> Yeah, I hope um, hope things are better for you soon as well, mate. In that, in the sense of you know, um, the anxiety and the depression and stuff. Because yeah, it's it's not a good place to be. I know all too well. Yeah, we'll get there in the end. It's funny actually seeing. Um, I've I've been speaking to people a bit more about. How I, you know, how I've been for most of my life and stuff. Um, and a lot of my friends um, have actually been incredibly supportive. Where I, I was kind of thinking like maybe it's, uh, you know, not something I want to like put on other people, um, and I don't want to burden people with it. Um, but it's really quite common among people to have sort of anxiety and depression and, and things like that um, and I don't think it's not as um, there's not as big a stigma attached to it anymore as there used to be so you can always feel like you can talk to people and stuff and um, obviously there's some some people there's gonna be you know who are still of that mindset like oh you know just get hold of yourself and you know grow a pair or man up or whatever like the expressions and stuff are that people are like famous for using and shit but on the whole I find that a lot of people are like actually um, pretty understanding about it there's a girl that I um, was seeing for a while um, and we sort of we didn't grow apart but it was like um, just things didn't work out if you see what I mean, for us to get together. Um, but she ended up getting married and um, moved in, obviously, with the guy and was living with him and stuff. And then she um, she got divorced. Um, and we started chatting again a little while ago. How do you do? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, yeah, we um, let's just have one of the is at the bar here or something um, yeah we started talking again and I just decided you know I should probably mention to her because I hadn't really been speaking to her properly and like I've been terrible for doing this to some of my friends as well like that instead of like talking to them about things or like sometimes responding to a text when I've been feeling really down I just don't respond sometimes um, but yeah, I thought like, you know, I've got to start letting people in and letting them know, you know, it's not them, it's me that like I've, you know, I've got problems, you know, sometimes letting people in and, and talking to people and stuff and I find it difficult, um, like trusting people to a degree too. But um, you'll be surprised, like talking to some of your friends and, and people that you thought maybe like didn't have problems like that with confidence or, you know, depression, anxiety, and so on as well, um, that they also struggle with the same kind of thing. Like this um, this woman that I'm talking about has um, several of the same things that I do, um, and we both have these same habits with, um, like one of the things I used to do when I was really anxious would be like tease hairs. Um, so I'd be like pulling a hair out of my eyebrow or something like that and 
yeah, I used to do that sort of stuff a lot when I was a kid. Um, for the various different reasons and stuff, but yeah, it was kind of like an anxiety thing. And um, we were talking about things like, you know, quite sort of openly. And um, she was like, oh yeah, I've I've been doing that and I need to get some, you know, help and stuff for it myself. So it's kind of like we've both said that we're going to help each other sort of get through things and you know I've lost my beer haven't I oh no maybe not um yeah we both said that we're going to try and help each other get through it and support each other stuff like that so I'm kind of glad that um I've had the courage to be able to talk to more people about how I've been and stuff like that and even like like I say now <laughs> talking to you and talking to the other people in chat, you know, um, and just sort of letting people in, letting people know in that respect. But yeah, it's okay not to be all right sometimes, and, you know, it's, there's always people there to talk to, and, yeah, anyone, anyone that ever feels like that in my chat or whatever and wants to talk and stuff, like, yeah, you can feel free to message me or, you know, talk about things and stuff, and I want people to be supportive of each other in my chat and not be like you know that typical sort of dickhead troll type person who's just gonna go like oh why don't you kill yourself or whatever because you've seen with that guy um i don't know his um online name but byron um bernstein i think um he's been found dead um and he was a big um person in the war world of warcraft and um other communities and stuff um, and there was clips and so forth on Twitch um, of, of Twitter rather um, of you know people in his chat saying why don't you kill yourself and stuff like that and he's like when you say that to someone who is a little bit at that stage where they're really honestly questioning whether like they want to carry on with life and stuff you're an evil fucker and you've you have to understand that like you say that to people enough and one day you'll say it to someone like him who unfortunately will do that and then you, i hope those people that say that kind of stuff like i hope that they feel some kind of guilt or some some sort of karmic you know vengeance for want of a better way of putting it is is brought sort of down on them in that sense because it's it's fucking horrible to act that way and i wouldn't want anyone like that in my chat or that kind of thing so i want you know the people in my chat i want everyone to be as supportive as possible to, to each other and you know to feel like you can talk to each other even if you don't want to talk in the chat about it and be open about it like that you can always dm me or you can whisper or whatever um but yeah just um just for people to try and get along in life because there's no point in like trying to make people feel bad about stuff it's like you just you just prove yourself to be the lowest form of you know the lowest form of humanity when you do that and i wouldn't even say you're human if you do that kind of stuff regularly to people it's just a fucking horrible thing to do i know that a lot of those people have a lot of issues themselves and that that's possibly why they do it maybe they've been you know bullied a lot of their life and so on and that this is their escape and that telling other people to do that sort of stuff is their way of like trying to deal with their own shit but yeah maybe just deal with your shit and get the help that you need and stop acting like a cunt <laughs> For one of a, be a better way of putting it without being quite so obscene, but that's just how I feel about the whole thing. Yeah, you can't really um, can't really claim to be a nice human being if um, if you act that way a lot of the time. But yeah, I'm just gonna wander back um, through town, and we're gonna log off over on. Um, over in the little area that we're, uh, we're sort of using is Cliff's home. Um, I think we're kind of sleeping in a burned out, um, burned out hut. I didn't realise it was burned out before, but um, looking at the outside of it, 
first few times I went there it was it was dark, but in online it's not I don't think it's burnt out in online. Um but yeah, it's one of the sort of enterable huts up here. Um so it's kind of where we've been facing ourselves. Partner? Yeah. I'm happy with the way that the uh, the story and everything is going for Cliff. And um the uh the people we've been running into on the whole have been really good. Good role players and good people. And it's providing interesting story as well for us. It's like getting to a point now where um Cliff's now going to be able to start stretching out on his own and um, finding people to uh, to take from place to place and as I say sort of shoot the breeze on the way there and talk about how um, how certain parts of uh, the country are the way they are or whatever you know like uh, the oil field and stuff like that if we go past there and you could talk about some oil baron that owns the place but I think as I say earlier on I think we uh yeah it is burnt out look <laughs> it's not very good it's weird because like the one the one sort of back room over here seems kind of uh kind of fine but yeah the whole outside of it looks like it's burnt to uh burnt to a crisp in fact, all of this looks fine as well. It's just, uh, yeah. So we can't get up. I was going to say, if we could get up onto the bed, that would be kind of cool. But then I realised what happened last time I tried to get into a little, um, <laughs> into a little thing. I like this floating, uh, floating bread basket here. It's defying gravity there. <laughs> and the dishes. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh well. But yeah, I think that's where um where I'm gonna call it for the moment. We'll do a quick little uh, save cord so we're not stood in the middle of roads when we log back in and getting run over by traffic. And I might just swap over swap over onto the other monitor and see if there's anyone streaming that we can pass you people over to, if there's anyone still watching. But um, yeah, as I say, mate, um, thanks again, Glasgow, for for stopping by and um, for uh, for being there as well. And like I say, mate, if ever you need to talk, you know, you you've got me on Twitter and everything like that as well, and. Um, don't know if you're on Doobie's Discord or anything like that, but you can find me on Discord um, that way um, if you like. And um, yeah, if ever you want to talk on there or whatever, then yeah, feel free because I'm more than happy to try and be supportive of people um, in that respect. But um, we will just have a quick check, see if anyone's streaming the old. Um, Streaming some WWRPs. Uh, don't see anyone I know. Sean is on, but he's. Oh no, he's playing Postscriptum. Well, let's send. Yeah. Let's host Sean. Um, let me go to my channel. I can't see chat and everything at the moment, but um, if anyone is still here, here we get the um, sound muted there, so I'm not hearing like myself five times over. <laughs> Um, but yeah, please feel free to drop by to and 
and um, give Sean some love and um, say hello and obviously um, it's a bit of a shame that we haven't been able to see him today but I'm going to um, slap him a host or slap him a raid uh, this is the way this is the way there we go one viewer is ready to raid Let's -a go. Don't know if this will screw it up, but um, anyway, take care out there, guys. And um, as I say, if ever you uh, you want to have a chat or uh, you're just feeling down or whatever, just yeah, feel free. Always, always there. But yeah, take care and thank you for joining me. And hopefully. Um, yeah, I might be on tomorrow and maybe we'll have um, a few more people round and about to rock out and uh, yeah, enjoy some RP together again. But as I say, thanks all for being here and um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Night night. Guys, you got a shaggy bush. Here we go. And keep it nice and tidy. Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh my god, trophy, thank you so much for that donation. Starting that death punch. Man, why is this goal so small? Holy fuck. I mean, why is the. No, goal. Why is the thing so small? Thank you so much for that trophy. I really appreciate that. Shout out. Shout. Thank you for that, dude. Why is it in dollars? Because. The compute dollars is like the universal currency, and it's like Twitch. It's like it's easier for people to read the dollar stuff. Do you know? What I mean? So I really, really appreciate that trophy yet again. Like there, it wasn't working. Shit. Anyone who's having stuff on the RP? Uh, but yeah, can't, can't be honest with you. I, fucking, I kind of wish I came over to you and introduced these people. These people I met this uh, one chick, she was like, really into collecting butterflies. I thought that was interesting, you know, for a story dime.